as I was getting ready to come and speak to y'all, I was just checking out some statistics about the current political situation. Two things really jumped out at me that I kind of knew, but the statistics were kind of startling. That 60% of Americans think that the country's on the wrong track. How many people in here agree with that? 80% of Americans say that they don't trust their government officials or their elected officials to do the right thing. How many people agree with that statement? And as a person who's taught government for 25 years, I actually found those two things really shocking. And I hope I can talk about a couple of things tonight that might allow us to think about ways that we can at least start to improve that situation. Um, as James said, I am Greg Snowd. I am running as a write-in candidate for the U.S. Senate race, and that's the seat currently held by Jim DeMent, his Democratic opponent being Alvin Green, and a few of the other write-in candidates in addition to myself and a couple of minor party candidates are running for that office. Uh, one of the things that, as a government teacher, I strongly believe in, and some of my former students are here, so they may have heard me say this, is I like to learn government by doing government. So I've been actively involved in politics probably since the late 1970s when I helped on a congressional campaign in Illinois. I worked for John Anderson, who was an independent candidate for president in 1980. I've been involved in several campaigns and then, and as James said, I've been active in local government in my current hometown of Greycourt. What I'm doing is I'm running a write-in campaign basically to give voters a chance to have a symbolic vote. Again, we chose this Senate race because we really did feel like the outcome was determined. I really actually feel like the outcome was probably determined even before some things have happened in the race, like the nomination of Alvin Green, but I think it make it less likely that it's going to be competitive. So we picked the race on purpose because we didn't really want to have an impact necessarily on the outcome, but we wanted to give people a chance to symbolically, or the symbolic vote, to represent three things. One, a more civil political debate. Again, one of the things I think that leads to this idea that 80% of Americans don't trust their public officials to do what's right. I mean, I, I encourage you to think about that, that we get very cynical, but I mean, I'm not sure that democracy functions very long well with 80% of the public saying they don't trust their public officials to do the right thing. And I think a lot of that is because of the polarized debate that we have in which we tend to demonize our opponents rather than look for places that we might be able to agree. And, I, and again, just to be respectful, I mean, one of the things maybe I bring to this as a teacher is I've taught students from all over the political spectrum, especially through Facebook over the last few years. I've reconnected to a lot of those, and several of them I don't agree with on public policy issues. But having taught them, I know they're incredibly smart. Some of them are absolutely brilliant. And frankly, they know more about some of these public policy issues than I do. And when we disagree, I just gradually find myself saying, you know, there's a good chance that they're right and that I could be wrong. And I have to, re I re I have to recognize that that's possible. So I think that kind of civil debate is really missing from our politics. The other thing, and several of my former students hopefully remember me saying this, is I really do feel like as Americans we agree on a whole lot more than we disagree on it. And I think that's true, and I think I can find polling data to back me up, but I don't see our politics working anymore for that common ground. I think we've got a polarized debate, we tend to demonize our opposition, and we tend to focus on issues that we disagree on rather than finding parts of public policy that we can agree on. Because of that, I think the other reason why 60% of the public probably feels that we're on the wrong track is because our government struggles to get anything meaningful done. What I'm hoping that I can convince some of you to do tonight and to spread the word about this is if you're not happy with the current state of politics and you want to use your vote in a really meaningful way, consider writing my name in for the U.S. Senate as a way to symbolize that you support civil political debate, building common ground to solve problems so we can move our country forward. And before, before I talk about what we're doing, I just want to say one of the things that I've got the really interesting feedback on is that a lot of people who have interviewed me for various things that we've seen in the media 
have actually said, and I, I was on a call, not a call in Charlotte, I guess it was streaming in Charlotte, so they were email questions that were coming to me. And a lot of the people were saying, oh, this consensus building, this civil debate, this is a really easy way out. It's, a, it's an easy way to, to try to pretend you're trying to deal with issues. And I really encourage you to see that I think being respectful of your opponents is really hard. I, mean, I think it's much more easy to demonize your opponents. And I got several of my former students in the room. They're looking at somebody who's pretty good at demonizing my opposition sometimes. <laughs> And I had to learn that that really wasn't particularly constructive. It might have been a good teaching tool. I'm sure I exaggerated it as a teaching tool, but I have no doubt that part of it I, I really meant. And I think ultimately that's not good for our politics. And you know, one of the things I would say is that kind of change is hard. I see people put stuff up on my Facebook group in response to things I've said that are pretty harsh. And I feel like, you know, I don't always want to respond respectfully to that, but I'm, I'm trying to force myself to do that because I think it's essential for our politics. The other thing that kind of surprised me is people tend to think of this as being kind of a squishy middle where we don't stand for anything if we're compromising. I really encourage you to see that, that that's not the case. I think it's really easy to get really self-righteous about your politics and just say, you're, I'm right or you're right all the time and I'm not going to compromise with anybody. I've heard several people um, as part of this campaign say that's one of the reasons that they like represent, uh, Senator, I'm sorry, DeMent so much. And I'm not being critical. I have a lot of respect for Jim DeMent. But I think that's easy to say, I'm always right, you're always wrong, and I'm not going to compromise with you. I think that's the easy way out. I think it's hard to compromise. I encourage you to see that it takes a lot of courage to compromise. Um, that you're willing to take only part of what you want, you're willing to give your opponent part of what they want, which you ultimately probably don't agree with, but you're willing to do it because you want to move the country forward, especially in today's political environment. I think that's really hard to do. Because every time I see somebody do it, I think Lindsey Graham in this state is a good example. I admire Lindsey Graham so much because he's willing to reach across the aisle and compromise, but the way I hear the news media and other people in politics characterizing him, they characterize it as weakness. They characterize it as a negative that he's willing to do that. And, and I encourage you to, to see, I, I think that takes a lot of courage to be willing to compromise. And then the other thing that I found, and I'm not saying that I've always been good at this, and I'm not saying I don't struggle with this still now, but I think our campaign also requires and supports a kind of humility that most of our public officials don't have. And it's just really the recognition that we all know that we can't be right all the time. I mean, I tell my students all the time, I think I'm right all the time, that's why I'm saying these things to you when you ask my opinion. But in the back of my mind, I know I can't be right all the time. And so maybe a better politics would be to try to draw some of the best ideas from all sides of our political system. What we've been doing is running what I consider to be also a pretty cutting edge campaign. That was probably part of my interest in doing it. We've, we've campaigned almost exclusively through social networking. We've created a Facebook group. I would love for you to look into that and feel free to join if you think you might want to just find out what we're doing. You're not indicating that you're going to vote for me, but that's Snowed for Senate on Facebook. We've got a website, snowedforsenate.com, that we're constantly updating and trying to talk about some of the things that we're trying to do in the campaign, and we've been using Twitter as well. And then we have done some mainstream stuff as far as reaching out to the media, releasing press releases in order to try to get some more attention. But the one thing that we really stro were striving for was a kind of different campaign. We've accepted absolutely no money. I've been offered campaign contributions. I said, no, that's not what we're doing. There's too much money in politics. We're not accepting any donations. We're going to see how many votes we can get for this idea of civil debate, building common ground, and moving the country forward by using free social networking and basically by empowering people who support me to spread the word through their social network. And so if you wind up thinking that this is a campaign that you want to spread the word on, that's one of the things I'll be asking you to try to do at the end. Again, one of the things you'll see on our Snowed for, um, Snowed for Senate Facebook, but also on the web page, is just kind of an idea of what, what process I'm suggesting might improve our politics, and then if you write my name in, you're going to symbolically support this process. One, informed civil political debate. Now, add to what I said earlier, informed. I think there's so much misinformation 
out there in politics. And, and because of that, I think it's difficult for people to know what's true, what isn't in politics. And again, I think informed in the sense that we bring in ideas from all over the political system. And so what you would see is one of the things I'll do on our website and also do on our Facebook group is pose an issue. I'll start by linking some information that I think is useful to becoming informed about the United group to link information that they think will be useful. And then I see it as part of my job then to try to figure out if between that I can start pulling together based on the comments and what's being linked some things that we might hold in common and then put that out for feedback. By supporting me, you're not supporting a specific issue. Is it a good idea to have accurate, informed debate, try to find what we can agree on, and if we actually find those things, pass public policy that will at least partially solve a problem and move the country forward? If you can support that kind of process, you can support our campaign. And I think that's what our politics is missing. We don't accomplish a whole lot, hence most people think we're on the wrong track. We, we basically demonize each other in an uncivil debate, hence 80% of Americans don't trust. I'm hoping we're kind of providing a process, or at least a model, for maybe how politics can be improved, not just in South Carolina, but across the country. So where do we go from here? We continue to do what we've doing, been doing. If you think that this is a campaign that you might be interested in, I encourage you to friend me on Facebook, to join our Snowed for Senate Facebook group, and to check out our website snowedforsenate.com. But to empower yourself just to spread information about our campaigns through your social network. Again, was that a fundraiser for, a, for a, a statewide politician yesterday and was surprised the number of people who I didn't know who were coming up and recognizing that our campaign what was going on and indicating that they were going to be supportive of us. So I think our support is way beyond just the numbers that we're seeing on, for instance, our Facebook page. And we'll also be trying to do more of these speaking engagements. If you know people who are in the upstate of South Carolina, I'm going to be speaking at Furman on October the 18th. That's a Monday at 7 o'clock in, Pl in Plyler um, Hall. And we post information both on the website and on the Facebook page if people are interested in att attending that event.